Okay. So, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our webinar tonight, which is about cats and old age. So, what are we going to cover? I've only got a couple of bullet points. As I said, it's going to be a fairly informal webinar, really. It's not like my traditional lessons and um, classes. So I'm going to talk to you about, you know, what I consider old age to be. And some of you have already shared, you know, the ages that you've, um, that you've got of your cats. We're going to talk about changes that the cats experience. We're going to talk about feline cognitive dysfunction syndrome, which sounds like a mouthful, which uh, it is, but we'll get on to that a bit later. And then as always, I always talk about complementary and alternative treatment options. So if you're looking for you know, veterinary care or the science behind things, this isn't really the webinar for you. I generally will talk about the emotional side of things, the behavior side of things. I don't generally tend to go into the science as much, but obviously you can always do some research, you know, at the end of the webinar, if you so wish. I'm going to share with you why having a plan is crucial when you're dealing with an elderly cat and also how to help you stay sane. So, those of you that uh, are familiar faces, thank you for joining me again. I'm really grateful that you're here. And for anybody that's new, thank you for coming to be part of the Naturally Cats community. And I just wanna do a few, um, uh, share with you a brief introduction about myself. So I created Naturally Cats. I call myself a holistic cat therapist, intuitive and behaviorist. So I left my corporate job in, last July, but Naturally Cats has been in the sphere of my world for probably about eight years. And it was inspired by Pickle, who's the cat at the bottom there. She was the cat on the front cover. And she was a very, very poorly cat, of which we'll come on to. But basically, I decided last year that I wanted to speak up and to, as you see on the bottom of the screen, uh, my hashtag, which is giving cats a voice. So I'm not a traditional behaviorist. I don't just look at behavior. I look at all the elements that affect a cat and actually... If you follow me on social media, you'll see I talk a lot about their emotional state, their emotional well-being and how we can help them. I believe there's no such thing as a problem behavior, that all behavior comes from, a, has a cause, has a reason. Usually that's emotional. It's, you know, fear, aggression, anxiety. Uh, and I call myself an intuitive because I have the capacity to connect in with cats, whether you want to call it animal communication or an empath. But basically, I'm highly sensitive and I can feel what they feel. So Pickle was put to sleep in October 2018 and I struggled horrendously with my grief at the time. So I decided to train and become a pet bereavement counsellor. There's also a free webinar that you can catch on the Naturally Cats YouTube channel, which is about cats and grief. And we talk about there, you know, how to help other cats in the home, how you can process and deal with your grief. I warn you halfway through, I do blub ever so slightly. So get a box of tissues handy. I'm a cat mum still. Uh, the top right is little Leo. He's our current rescue cat and he's asthmatic. Uh, every day is a, is a dream with him. Even when he's tearing around the house at quarter past three in the morning, um, I am learning to love again. And uh, he's obviously, he's our current cat. And like with things tonight, I'm an educator of feline guardians. So I'm trying to help people to understand their cat, to see their cat, and to really be aware of how they can provide for their cat. So I've got a personal mission, just no small dream, to change the world's perception of cats. So I don't believe that, you know, cats do things to, to spite people. I believe that we have a duty as their guardians to give them the best care that we can. And for part of that, for me, it's continuing, you know, education and trying to help people see cats for the amazing beings that they are. So that's a bit about me. So on to the webinar. So this, this webinar is about cats and old age, how do we provide for them? How do we care for them? What do we need to look for? So really the first question we need to ask ourselves is, you know, what is elderly? What, what is old age for a cat? So I've put, I've got a fabulous graphic actually from uh, the internet from allaboutcatsonline.com. I don't know about the website. I haven't visited the site. So if you do decide to visit their site, I don't know, you know, I, I can't um, vouch for any information on there. Oops. But the graphic for me was really interesting. So there is the uh, cat's age and the human equivalent. How they measure that, I've no idea. 
But what I find really interesting is that, you know, years ago, they didn't have six categories. And I think now this has been refreshed, like the um, international cat care, no, international. I can't think of it is. They used to be called, um, oh God, see, here, come, here goes the issues with the words. International Cat Care, um, Feline Advisory Bureau, that's who they were called. They used to have four stages and now we've got six. So you share with me earlier the ages of your cats and from the, from the looks of it, we've got a couple that really mature senior and geriatric. So what I would say is, you know, it's, it's hard to say, oh, if a cat's nine years old, they're old, you know, or if a cat's 17, they're old. Now, yes, 17 is older, obviously, than a, a nine-year-old cat. But I think we what we need to realise is that just the same with humans, you know, age doesn't really matter. It can be a guideline in terms of managing health and monitoring health. But, you know, Pickle was very old for very long. And regardless of her age, she had she was very sedentary and you know she wasn't very playful but she was never really like that whereas I've known other cats who are 20 and they are still you know they'll sort of nip at your feet or they'll um you know go for a toy or something so so really old age I, I can't give you an answer that says you know senior category is old age because again it depends on health and if there are any health issues and um, you know physical problems, mobility, et cetera, et cetera. So what I would say is I would advise you to look at quality of life, look at the quality of life for your cat and use that as a measure and use that as a guideline to see if they are slowing down, if their movement is reduced, which we'll come on to, but use their quality of life and actually a measure of their previous quality of life to determine if they are coming into that zone where they're starting, as a couple of you have said actually in the chat, starting to slow down. And do you know what? That's okay. That's absolutely okay. But we need to make allowances for that and we need to make adjustments for that. So I've put a little list here of basically of things that are almost like the obvious things. Um, and I'll make sure that uh, you will get a copy of the slides along with the recording. So the obvious type of change, you know, that we need to be aware of is mobility. And so Pickle, I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you what year it was, but it was, it was a good few years ago. We ended up, we noticed that she wasn't coming on the bed and she was always a bed cat. Um, she's never a lap cat, actually. She's always a bed cat. She'd come and snug with me and we'd be, you know, we'd spoon with your cat, you know, who doesn't? And, uh, you know, it wasn't just a once or once or twice. We noticed that she wasn't coming on the bed as much. Um, so again, it, it led us to look at her mobility and how she was moving. And there can be mental and uh, changes with cats, which is part of the um, condition we're going to talk about in a minute. So relationships, that might seem like a strange one, but, you know, yes, you might just say, oh, an older cat, they sleep more. But actually their relationship with humans can change. So Pickle was always a little standoffish with most people. There were a couple of people that she was, she, she would let into her kind of, you know, bubble of acceptance, shall we say. Um, so when we used to go away, my mum and my auntie would come and uh, look after her because they'd need to inject her. And, you know, she would have cuddles with them or she'd let them stroke them. And, you know, that, that was a rare, a rare feat to behold. But, as she got older, she was a lot less tolerant, in fact, of, of me and my husband as well, not just other people in the home. So have a think about, you know, has your cat changed in terms of their relationship with you and other people? They might be more cuddly or they might be more standoffish. There is no right and wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, with any of this webinar. There is no right or wrong. There is no linear way to say, this is how it goes with an elderly cat. It's that, you know, life's just not like that. So it's all about your cat and knowing your cat, knowing <clears throat> what, what has changed for them, what is different for them. So pickle, I've put here about not eating as much or as often, and this can really depend on what you feed. So I advise my clients, if possible, to do scheduled feeding rather than free feeding, because with scheduled feeding, not only does it create a good routine and it helps to create positive association, it can be used for behavior modification. 
in terms of like introducing other animals but it's also a really great way to measure your cat's intake of food so whether they're diabetic they've got pancreatitis or even just that they're getting a bit older it's really helpful to know how much they're eating so in my experience with pickle um we you know she she kind of ate less i don't know how she managed to still put on weight she was always a bit of a rotund cat bless her um healthy you know healthy weight i would say but when we were doing scheduled feeding you know if there were times when she'd leave like half the bowl or a quarter of the bowl you know my my little like radar would come up and i'd be like okay what's going on you know is she having a term for the worst are things deteriorating what's going on it was a flag it was a red flag for me so if you're not doing scheduled feeding i definitely recommend it especially as your cat's getting older that being said, don't make too many changes, as you'll see in a moment. Don't make sudden changes, but just try to incorporate, you know, a routine as best you can. So more withdrawn, I've mentioned that with regards to the relationships, you know, they might want more attention, they might want less. Um, Pickle would, again, I don't know when it, when it really started. When I think back now, you know, you think it's all quite clear in your mind, but it all just seems to sort of fog into one. She got to the point where we would, I would always watch a film of an afternoon on the weekend. And I'd always have a blanket. I'm a blanket kind of girl, you know, hence the hot water bottle. And she would, she got to the point where rather than sit on top of the blanket and cuddle with me, she'd go underneath it. Super cute, super funny. But what I noticed was that there was one day when we had a blanket on the chair, like half on the arm of the chair, and she tried to like bury underneath it. And Ever since then, we would basically have like a tent. So we had, you know, she had her own chair because she was the queen of the house, obviously. And we'd have the chair and we'd have a, you know, a towel draped over it with this sort of hole where she could go inside. And I think now when I look back on it, hindsight's a wonderful thing, that she didn't like the noise as much. She wasn't as tolerant of the light. So just have a look and see, are they sleeping somewhere that's a bit darker or a bit kind of away from the family? Are they a bit more withdrawn? Yes, they're going to be sleeping more. I mean, to be honest, that could be a hard one to determine because some cats sleep a lot anyway. Again, this is an age thing. And usually from about eight years old, they, they're, in my experience, their sleep patterns increase. But again, just something to know and something to be aware of. So something I mentioned in the blog that was released on Monday, if I haven't had a chance to catch it, it's on the blog page of the Naturally Cats website. And I've got a list there and I recommend... For those of you that have joined me on more than one of these webinars, you'll know that I recommend a notebook. And this is because making notes and, and monitoring your cat and their trends and things like that can be really helpful. So I mentioned it on the live today, instead of saying to the vet, you know, oh, Leo's had a couple of coughing episodes in the last, I don't know, three months. That's that's not really that helpful. But if because we do actually record his coughing and his eating and his inhalers. You know, I can say to my vet, OK, Leo's had four coffin episodes in, you know, 12 days and they've been a minute and two minutes each. That helps her understand the severity of the issue. So with the sleeping, I'm not saying, you know, you write down your cat's every single movement, but you could start to make a couple of notes. And in the blog, I've written a couple of categories to just consider, you know, even if you just start today, tomorrow, have a look at the blog. I mean, even create your own. And have a think about, you know, just sort of setting a baseline. I think that's something that's quite important when it comes to dealing with an elderly cat is looking at what deteriorates or looking at what changes, because that will help you decide how much support you need to give them and where you need to give them support. So reduced interest in play, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm getting older, you know, I'm almost 40. And I don't want to go out as much and do as much. So regardless of what age I am in, you know, the cat equivalent years, their interest in play may reduce as well. That being said, there is always a need to give them some form of physical or mental stimulation. So do what they can manage. Have a think about whether you do five minutes of play every other night or five minutes of play, I don't know, three times a week. Don't, don't, fall into the trap that I did, which was pickles old, she sleeps, she eats, she poops. That's it. You know, that, that's what we got stuck in. I very rarely tried to play with her because I thought, well, she's old, she doesn't want to. And actually, again, in hindsight, I wish I had. I wish I'd done more with her to stimulate her a little bit more. 
not going outside as much. So obviously as cats age, because they're a predator animal, they can feel vulnerable. Again, we mentioned this on the live again today, you know, cats hide pain very, very well. They cannot be perceived to be vulnerable in any way, shape or form. Even we talked about with this with healing. So when you're using remedies or, you know, holistic um, complementary or alternative treatments with your cat, you need to set the scene. You need to give them the capacity and the space and the environment to be vulnerable and to go into that healing space. So it's just the same with them going outside. They might not want to because they can't run away as quickly. They can't really fight back. They know that they're ill. They know that they've got a wonky hip. So, you know, they're not going to put themselves in that situation to feel threatened. And that's okay if they don't go outside as much. But have a think about what you can bring in for them. What can you bring into the home? Can you grow some cat grass? Can you put down a herb garden? You know, what can you bring into the home? Can you bring in a water feature? You know, I'm not suggesting like a massive fountain, but you know, from like, I don't know if those, those of you that are in the UK, but if you go to some sort of like homeware store or like a garden store, you can get like inside, that's not the right word, internal, um, like little water fountains. In fact, you can get cat water fountains, you know, for drinking. So have a think about what enrichment you can bring indoors for them if they're not going outside as much. They may be less tolerant of other animals. So I've seen this so many times when a cat is elderly or old, whether you want to call it geriatric or super geriatric, whatever, you know, people want a fun cat. People want something to play with um, and they get a younger cat and, you know, maybe it's a kitten. And yes, you think, oh, we've got a kitten. The older cat just sleeps a lot. I won't be bothered. That's not necessarily true. And actually it might cause extra stress to the elderly cat because of the noise, the interaction, the younger cat or kitten trying to engage with the older cat. So if you do get a second, third, fourth, fifth animal and you do get a younger one, have a think about making sure that you can entertain it. You can um, remove the need for that younger animal, might be a puppy, to, to sort of like bother the elderly cat because they heal we all heal when we sleep and it is really important that these elderly cats get the time to heal get the time to sleep and actually we don't want to cause them extra stress so have a think about you know if you need to put their cat bed somewhere different where they're not bothered by the other animals but they might be a bit less tolerant so they might start nipping they might start hissing swiping and again that's not because it's a bad cat it's because it's trying to communicate i'm overwhelmed I, I can't tolerate this. That's enough for me. And then finally, changes to their temperament, which we have kind of covered with some of the other bullet points. So it may be that you had a lovely lap cat before, or they were really cuddly and loving towards other people. And it might be that that starts to change and they're not really you know, interested in other people. It could be that you go to stroke them and they hiss and spit at you. And that's a really familiar, uh, that's a really common sign of cat pain. So, you know, when we talked today about when I was stroking pickle, you know, I'd start like at her head and go down. And as I'd get towards the, the base of her spine and her hips, she would sometimes sort of flinch and, and, you know, sort of recoil away because it's painful for her. So if you notice this when you're touching your cat or you're around your cat and you see them move slightly differently, have a think about getting them checked by the vet just to see what's going on. Okay. So... Cognitive dysfunction syndrome, I should have put feline at the beginning of that, is basically Alzheimer's for cats. So this is where, you know, you could joke and say that they start to lose their marbles. They start to be a little bit crazy. Um, and we absolutely had this for Pickle. Absolutely. She wasn't officially diagnosed with it to my knowledge there's no diagnosis there's no like blood test that you can do so if you think that you know you can tick some of these boxes or even if you can tick a few of them and not all of them have a think about speaking to your vet because you might want to look at some preventative measures so there's a long list here i think there's is there more on the next page oh no the next thing is about things that we can do to help them so this is a long list of things and we had probably I'd say if not all of them for pickle um so one of the one of the hardest ones for me was uh the increased vocalization and again this is something that I put in my blog that I am still struggling struggling to deal with pickle would make the most horrendous 
howling noise and it wasn't just at night time yes a lot of the time it was 3 a.m in the morning but actually it was during the day as well and she would scream she would howl you know and I'd run to her wherever I was whatever time of the day or night it was and she'd just be sat there and she'd be like mum hello you know sometimes she had the look of incredulous she had this incredulous look on her face like I'd interrupted her sleep but it was horrendous and she was, there was no rhyme or reason to it. I thought she was in pain. I tried to help and it didn't make any difference. And sometimes I would shout at her and I'm not proud of saying that. And I have to say, it's taking a lot of courage for me to share this with you. And I'll come on to this a bit later about, you know, our mental health, but it, it got too much. And I would shout at her because I just didn't know what to do. I felt helpless and I could see that she was struggling. So it's hard. I have to move on. I wasn't going to get upset. So increased vocalization. Yes, it, for um, CDS, it is at night, but just be wary. It can be any time of the day, like morning sickness. It's never just in the morning. Or so I hear. Altered wake and sleep patterns. So we absolutely had that. Like I said, she would be like wide awake three in the morning um, and you go down to her and she's fine. And she's just sat there awake. Uh, and we had issues in terms of her appetite as well, because as much as I wanted to stick to structured feeding, she didn't always agree with that. So at times I would give her a little bit of food to see if that would calm her and settle her. It didn't. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. We didn't really have the pacing with her. We did have the anxiety. Like I said, she would always go under the blanket. Um, and we did have the disorientation and confusion. So. One day, I never forget, we came home and Pickle always had issues with constipation uh, because she was on Metacam. Again, I wish I'd known better. And at times she would have, what was the jelly stuff we used to put in her food? I can't think what it was. Something to help her poo, basically, and it didn't really work. But I found out later that it caused dehydration, which, you know, one of the reasons people can be constipated. Anyway. We came home one day and found that she'd pooed in the corner by the TV. And it was like, if you've ever, you know, ever experienced, it's like an exploder poo. It was all up the wall. It was everywhere. And I walked in and just laughed because like, what else can you do in that situation? Right. Rob, my husband, just like looked at me and just was like, oh, no, here we go again. Um, we had a point where she was not necessarily having issues for getting where the litter tray was that frequently. I think she was having situ the she was having issues with using the litter and getting into the litter tray. So we ended up, which I'll come on to in a minute, changing her tray. But she very rarely made it into the tray. So uh, we would have situations where we'd call it like hunt the nugget because it'd be like hunt the nugget of poo. Whereas whereas it happened, but partly I do think that was because she was constipated. So you you may know that if cats have issues either having a wee or having a poo, if they've got pain, they might not be in the litter tray because they can sometimes associate that. Um, the litter tray with that pain painful situation uh aggressive outburst we didn't really have that very much she was always a bit of a grumpy cat so I wouldn't have said that that was particularly a symptom that we experienced apart from if there was the occasional time you go to stroke her and she was a bit sensitive um she had reduced activity definitely uh but the one of the things we noticed for her was her grooming behavior so she couldn't reach that was part of the problem. She she was quite a big cat and she couldn't <clears throat> reach to the lower part of her back. So I would try and brush her and groom her. She was never very tolerant of it. Thankfully, she was short haired, so we didn't have many issues um, in terms of you know mats and things like that. But obviously, if you've got a long haired cat, you need to think about that. You need to think about behavior modification and behavior training with them with brushes now whatever age they are, do it now so that they are comfortable with being brushed, brushed and groomed. They are accepting of it because when they get older, I tell you, you know, they will have issues. They will have mats and you will need to, to, to look after them. You need to help them, help them clean their coats. So if you're dealing with CDS, what's, what can you do to help your cat? And I talk about CDS, so cognitive dysfunction syndrome, but actually, all of this for me is all about old age for cats. It's not just about if you go to the vet and you get this diagnosis. It's not just about if you think this is going on. I We ended up doing all of these things. And like I said, I think Pickle had this. 
But for me, it's almost like a great way to bunch all of this together about an elderly cat, which is why I featured it in the webinar. So how can you help and support them? So the first thing I would say you, that suggest that you do, and I do with any client is check, have a checkup with the vet, speak to your vet, um, give them information, give them facts. So, you know, vets, a lot of the time, um, conventional or traditional vets, I would say, you know, their information and their logic is based in science, in facts. So this is where the book comes into, into its own. So if you go to your vet and say, we've experienced, you know, from the previous slide, this, 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 and this, she or he is doing it this time, this time, this time, you can go there and present that information. I can't tell you how many different vets when I've seen them and they, and they <laughs> given them my book, whether it's Pickle or Leo, and the look on their face, they kind of like smirk a little, but actually they dive straight in. It is really helpful. So whether you've got a notebook or you have a notelet on your phone or a document on your computer, I don't care, but just have a think about a way to kind of connect and again, be more cognizant of your cat to start recording information about them. Maybe it's a once, once a month check-in, you know, if they're a bit older, maybe it's a fortnightly check-in or a scoring of these different categories. Have a think about it. So speak to your vet and, and see whether you need to get a diagnosis, see whether there's something else going on. So generally what happens is they will do bloods just to make sure there are no other issues. So for example, pancreatitis, diabetes, you know, and all the other stuff that comes with it, hypothyroidism, all those kind of serious um, conditions. And actually having regular checkups with an elderly cat is no bad thing because it does mean that the vet can keep an eye on you know, how they're doing, how they're progressing, how old age is treating them, you know, kind of like an MOT, right, for your car. So if you've got any concerns, speak to your vet. Now, here are some of the, here are some of the practical things that we did in the home that we did to help pickle. And again, you know, some of them helped, I think, some of them I wish we'd done sooner. But, you know, if you're aware of them and you see that there's a need as, as it's written in a great Disney film, see a need, fill a need, you know? So we lifted up her food and drink stations. We didn't get anything fancy. We actually put them on three three of my best cat books um, because they were higher, you know, so she didn't have to bend down as much. And actually, I know that if, pe if people have got a cat that's uh, vomiting frequently, sometimes having an elevated uh, food and drink station can help. So it goes into the throat a little bit in a different angle. Be, be aware if you've not already to have your food and drink station separate. So cats in the wild would never drink from a water source near their kill, near their food. So if you wonder why your cat's not drinking very much, if you've got one of those old school bowls that's got, you know, uh, food and water together, separate them. So it's an innate drive, I would say, that's that's come down even though you've domesticated cats it's still something in them that's that's nature rather than nurture so you know put your water bowl somewhere else we actually added water bowls for pickles here one upstairs on the landing in the corner of the landing and we have one downstairs like on a we've got like a hearth for the fireplace we have one on there um so if you haven't already separated your water bowls do that but again think about having them somewhere where it's easy access not near litter trays Add steps. So we had some brilliant steps. I think at the time they were from Amazon. And I tell you, they've got so much better in quality because we had basically clip together plastic ones. And they're like a sheepy skin, a fake sheepskin cover over it. They were actually a little bit slippy. So occasionally, bless her little heart, she'd miss a foot or she'd slip off. And they're not high. Um, but now we've actually... <laughs> <laughs> that makes me smile we've actually bought some new steps for leo because we've got a cat flat fitted for him in our downstairs bedroom and the window sill is not not hugely high i'd say it's like lower than hip height but i said to rob i'm conscious with him being four years old already i don't want him jumping up and down every day because i don't want to put that pressure on his joints now to then have damage when he's older so we've got some little steps going up to the window and they're fabulous they're like a scratching post like you know those scratching those cat trees you get with the like thistle rope around them and um yeah fabulous so you can get steps now so we put one up to pickle's chair and we put one up to the bed easy access litter trays so we always had uncovered trays and i won't go into that now pros and cons for both we ended up getting <laughs> a puppy training tray, which was probably about, let me think of my measurements, three meters by three meters. It was massive. 
absolutely massive. And the reason we got it is because it was so shallow. I mean, the, the little trays that you can see at like supermarkets, you know, yes, they're shallow, but they're tiny. And Pickle was a big cat. And you have to take this into consideration, the size of your cat and their uh, and the accessibility. So we got this huge puppy training tray, which took up like, well, a good third of our dining room. And we put mats underneath it. So from pets at home, you can get like plasticky mats that are washable. They're litter tray mats. Um, and uh, oh my goodness, did they get washed. So many times I would see her like in the tray with her front two feet and her butt hanging over the edge. I'm like, baby girl, you know, this, this litter tray is massive. You know, how can you not get into it? Do you know what I mean? And it wasn't just a question she couldn't get in because she had all four legs into it. She just decided to pee over the edge. So we would frequently wash the mats. You know, we would come home from work and check there'd be an accident and, and it was hard. So think about, can they get into the litter tray? Is it easy access? You know, if it's covered or with a door, is that the best thing for them as they get older? So don't move or make changes to the home. So with Alzheimer's, with people, you know, change is unsettling. Now, let's face it, as humans, change is unsettling at the best of times, even if you've got all your mental faculties. But really with cats, you know, not making changes, especially if they're blind or they're losing their sight, can be really, really helpful to keep things as they are. Again, sadly, we moved we, out of necessity. We moved three times in two years. Um, not my best decision. Circumstances out of my control, life choices, etc. That's when the howling with Pickle did increase. Uh, she would sit at the top of the stairs and she would howl just during the day. I'd run up to her, I'd cuddle her. You know, she'd be fine and settle down. So try, if you can, to not move things around. And by that, I mean like the sofa, you know, the big pieces of furniture, you know. Um, and if you can stick to a daily routine as much as possible, I appreciate at the moment, probably we've all got a bit more of a routine than we would like. Um, but have a think about, you know, trying to, at least for your cat's sake anyway, this is where I said before about structured feeding times. You know, can you feed them at certain times to help with that routine and that kind of ebb and flow of their day? So mental stimulation, we've talked about toys, you know, um, there are puzzle feeders and licky mats and treat balls. So these are to do with food. Not necessarily ideal for all cats. Depends what you're feeding. For those of you that know me, naturally cats don't advocate dry food. I'm not going to get into that now. If you'd like more information on that, you can watch the free webinar that we've got about cats and cat food on YouTube. Basically, licky mats, the plastic mats, yes, not ideal, they're plastic, but you can smear either raw or wet food into them and it slows down eating and it's a bit more fun for the cat to be able to get the food. Similar with puzzle feeders and with treat balls, you know, if you're feeding high quality freeze dried treats, you know, you're not feeding dreamies, which is one of the most terrible cat treats you can feed, then, you know, a treat ball is great. You can put a couple in there and let them play around with it. Especially if your cat is food driven, that would be a really, really great way to get them a little bit of physical activity and a little bit of mental stimulation. Don't punish excessive vocalization. That is, you know, I had to put that in there. One of my biggest lessons and something I'm still making peace with, as I've mentioned, but you have to step away. You have to take time out, which I'll come on to for yourself and your mental health in a minute. They don't know that they're doing it. They're not doing it to wind you up or to punish you or to be difficult or awkward. You know, it's like with elderly people when they're you know, moaning or vocalizing or shouting. It's not it's not on purpose, you know, so just be kind to them. Reduce environmental stresses, as I have mentioned about, you know, other animals in the home, you know, reduce kind of the impact on the cat. Environmental stress stresses also covers things, you know, like building work in the home, you know, the TV on really loud, TV in one room and another one in another, you know, have a think about bringing a sense of calm to the home because it will really help the cat. Supplements to the diet. So again, this is something you could talk about with your vet. We tried, I think it was Nutriquin or something similar like that, Nutri something um, in her food. I don't think it made much difference. To be honest, I think we tried it too late. And by that point, I was already learning complementary and alternative remedies with zoopharmacognosy, so which is animal self-selection. So we did use supplements for her, but we used natural, natural options, which I'll come on to. Um, and the last way to help and support your cat is to share your frustrations with other humans. 
So if any of you, like I said, I can't see the chat at the moment, but if any of you are experiencing any of this, you know, share it here with people, like-minded people, speak to your best friend, speak to the crazy cat lady down the road, safely, of course. Come and join our discussion group on Facebook, Naturally Cats Discussion Group. You know, come and vent, come and join the, the, the Calm Cats Meditation class. Share, share how you're feeling with other people. That is one of the most important things you can do. Okay, so I talked about um, complementary treatment option, options for pickles. So a couple of you mentioned that you've got my book, which is fabulous. So it's called The Aromatic Cat Book. And uh, it was written by myself and Nayana Morag. So it's all about how to use herbs, dried herbs and fresh herbs, hydrosols, and excuse me, essential oils with cats. So it's all under the premise of self-selection. So basically you let the cat choose. So what I wanted to do here, and I realized what the time is, so I'm going to probably gloss over it, but I wanted to give you an idea of some really great remedies that I use with pickle. And, you know, if you're not comfortable using essential oils, particularly, I definitely encourage you to get the book, Aromatic Cat. You can buy it from the Naturally Cats website via the shop tab. And if you order it from me, you get a signed copy. Um, it is also on Amazon as well. But, you know, if you get it from me, you support a small business. Um, so in there, we talk about essential oils. We've got 40 profiles and we tell you where uh, the history of the oil, how to use it and what it's good for. So, you know, with essential oils, they're a very, very potent form of a plant remedy, whereas herbs are literally the other end of the spectrum. So cats are very energetic beings. They're very sensitive to energy, our energy, energy in the room, energy from other animals, energy from uh, electronics, you know, Wi-Fi, all that kind of thing. So if you're not comfortable using essential oils, that's fine. You know, do a bit of research, do a bit of learning. And if you still don't want to give it a go, that's OK. Try herbs. Herbs are one of the safest ways you can bring enrichment and emotional and physical support into your home for your cat. So, again, I sell dried herbs. I sell them as different types of gardens. I mentioned before something called a herb garden. And this is where you basically get a towel or a blanket put it down on the floor in a nice quiet area of the home. So ours is in the corner of our dining room and you put a bit, a good pinch of each herb on a corner. So I only put four down at a time. I know some people do more, but I don't want to overwhelm the cat. So I put four down at a time. And here with the list on the left, I start off with some really nurturing remedies. So like Jasmine, Rose, Angelica, they're all really that, just that really nurturing, really warming for the heart. Um, which, you know, an elderly cat needs, needs a bit of support. And there are others there which we've got for pain and, um, you know, whether that's like physical pain or emotional pain. So I can't tell you what your cat will choose. And the reason you put it down on a blanket is because you let your cat rub, roll, sniff or lick with on, on the herb and the flower. So you let them do what they want to do with it. But, you know, you can try one, try it and see what happens. It, the worst that can happen is your cat doesn't do anything with it. But if you try it, it might be interested. It might surprise you and it might give it some support. So the remedies that I love, I've pretty much covered here. Um, sandalwood is actually really great for kind of like end of life. Um, it's really, it really helps the soul to be balanced and, and really kind of connect with the grounding energy. Chamomile is really calming, like we all have, calm, you know, peppermint and uh, chamomile tea, same effect for cats. Um, geranium balance helps to balance the chakras and with violet leaf, again, it's another pain remedy that can help, but it also helps to support with change. So if the cat is experiencing change itself, it's going to help the cat to deal with that. Hydrosols, I'm not going to go too much into if you're more interested, if you'd like, if you are interested in it, there's more in the book, what they are, how you use them. It's kind of like a halfway house in terms of strength and potency. So again, I've got rose, which is nurturing catnip, which can be calming, but not all cats are affected by catnip. Only about 60 to 70% of cats are. Frankincense, which is just a gorgeous, gorgeous remedy and uh, valerian, which is calming and helps with pain. What I wanted to draw out here is the barley grass and spirulina. So the picture right at the beginning of the slides is Pickle enjoying spirulina. So basically I was learning about self-selection when she was, you know, when she was with me and I offered her spirulina, basically the dry powder on a saucer and she absolutely snuffled it up. She ate the lot. And, you know, I've shared a couple of pictures on my social media of her and we get it everywhere. 
She didn't like it with the carrier oil. She didn't like it mixed with water. Leo has it with uh, carrier oil uh, then down for him to select if he wants to. Um, but spirulina is great. It's not only an immune boost, which obviously helps the body, the aging body, but it helps to reduce pain. And it is an essential dose of vitamins and minerals. So, you know, how, how can you not offer it? I don't advocate adding to food at all. Have it as a in a sauce that, you know, try it mixed with water into a thin paste or a thick paste. Try it with a carrier oil. You know, again, experiment, offer it to your cat, see what they like. And barley grass, just the same, just the same. Pickle was never really keen on barley grass. Um, she always liked the kind of stinkier, the, the, the richer, darker um, spirulina. But the powders are a great, great way to offer additional support. So that's for me as complementary treatment options in terms of remedies, botanical remedies. But obviously there's a huge list of other complementary or alternative treatment options. So there's pickle. That was the, crikey, that was three houses ago. No, four houses ago. Um, I'm so much younger then. <laughs> and uh, she was having some, uh, some Reiki. She, she loved healing. She loved Reiki. She would have it pretty much every day. And, and again, not because I'm giving it to her or forcing it on her. Whenever I'd, she'd sit near me, I'd go to stroke her and then I'd feel my hands get warm. You know, I'm a Reiki master. So I would sit there and give her as much or as little Reiki as she wanted. And then we've got the gorgeous cat on the right, which is uh, Mitzi. And she is sat with her amethyst heart. So you may not have been interested in complementary or alternative treatments before, and that's okay. They're usually something people find when they're out of options with veterinary or Western medicine. Um, what I would say, I've just realized I haven't put on here. Uh, CAM for animals, complementary and alternative medicine, number four, animals.com. Fabulous organization, great website. They have a lot of information about these options, about these treatments. I work a lot with them. I'm a massive supporter. You'll see I've done blogs for them. I've got stuff about them on my site. They basically are trying to help educate guardians with having a holistic approach to care, animal care, animal welfare. So, you know, if your cat's on a form of medication, you know, find a qualified professional in one of these treatment options and have a conversation. You know, is, are there any contraindications? A lot of these things will work alongside veterinary medicine. You know, it's just a question of how you integrate it and how you bring it all together. But have a think, you know, you might want to look into massage or flower essences, whatever it may be. And I'm sure there are more. The ones I've put here are the ones that I'm aware of. So if there's anything I've missed, I apologize. But, uh, you know, have a think about whether you want to boost their current treatment or their current situation or wellness with one of these lighter not as invasive or, or as hard on the body therapies. You know, it might be something that you start now or investigate now if they're say 10, 12, before they get to those sort of senior years and you're dealing with those chronic illnesses. So I mentioned before, why is having a plan crucial? And I know a lot from what we did with Pickle and to be honest with you, I'm, I feel a lot more prepared for what we may encounter with Leo if we have him for as long, Pickle was 17 when we put her to sleep. But what I would say is it is really, it's a really good idea to get things in place. You know, have a think about what options you want when the inevitable end comes. And like I said, we talked about this in the grief webinar that you can watch, what to think about how you want it to go. Have a think about how you're getting on and communicating with your vet. So I didn't realize until Pickle was diagnosed with diabetic. She was diabetic for over 10 years. And I didn't realize I could ask my vet questions. I didn't realize I could ask for a second opinion. I didn't realize I could go to him with information and challenge what he said to me. And I would say that if there's one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that you can have a voice when you communicate with your vet. And if a vet doesn't listen to you, and if your vet isn't receptive, then you need to find another vet because the veterinary professional should work alongside you in terms of any form of treatment that you wish to explore with your animal. So find a vet that will talk with you and work with you about this, about the, your current situation. Get other professionals involved. Like we just mentioned on the previous slide, you may not have heard of half of those treatments. To be honest, I've not explored half of those treatments, but it might be the time now to, to read a little bit, you know, go to CAM for animals, find out a bit about what a Tellington Touch practitioner does, you know. I've got a brilliant book on cat massage, actually. Um, so, you know, start start reading up, start, start finding investig uh, 
information and doing your own investigations you know now's a great time to get other professionals involved even if you don't you know you've, you've not got an elderly cat if it's going that way or you just want to be a bit prepared you know start making some contacts now because trying to find the right person when you're not in a dire situation and it's that extreme need to find the right practitioner is easier easier for your, your mental health and easier on the cat because you're not introducing to loads of different people so if you've got a nervous cat and they need time to get to know someone you know any good professional should have a conversation with you to tell you what they do what they're qualified in how the session works so maybe reach out you know and yes of course at the moment it's hard to have that face-to-face -face conversation but perhaps you could have a zoom call or a you know a video chat and and get to know what it is that they do so again i put here share your struggles and get help it is imperative and i put that in massive capitals i don't talk a lot in capitals but it is really really important guys um that you get help and support so i think that's my next slide yeah so I talk about a, uh, a sparkle jar. I mentioned it years ago to family actually, and it's come through into Naturally Cats. I talk about an anxiety jar for nervous cats when I'm dealing with clients, but I talk a lot. In fact, a friend bought me for Christmas a, a jar that lights up and it's all glittery. She said to me, there's your own sparkle jar. I talk about a sparkle jar for humans. So, you know, we do stuff and, and it takes glitter, a sparkle out. Whether that is like, um, I don't know, let me think, doing your neighbour's shopping or um, I don't know, whatever it may be, if you're going to work, right? <laughs> I mean, I love my job, but, you know, for people that have to go into an office or, or um, I don't know, dealing with the kids or something, whatever it may be, it's different for everyone. Stuff takes out glitter and sparkle from your sparkle jar. And I think what we're particularly bad at is putting stuff back in putting the sparkle back in and when you're dealing with an elderly cat it is really really crucial that you speak to people and get help now I don't necessarily mean get counseling maybe you need that but just vocalizing and saying you know I'm struggling it's really really hard I mean I was in tears a lot about pickle privately didn't share with friends and family I was struggling with this screaming you know I just wanted to help make it better and I couldn't and I think one of the lessons I've learned, I think that's one of the reasons why I set up the discussion group was to give people an outlet and somewhere to find comfort where they wouldn't be judged. And I say to you, if you're dealing with an elderly cat, even if they're not at that stage where things are really difficult, you know, maybe you're just at the point where it's just frustrating occasionally, have a think about what it is that puts sparkle back in your jar. And actually, if you're not dealing with an elderly cat, I would encourage you to do this too. Have a think about it. What is it that, that lights you up? What is it that gives you joy? I watch a Marvel film. I watch Disney films. I've got loads of Disney films. I've just recently got back into Cross Stitch. I'm making a, a bookmark for my niece for her birthday. You know, what is it for you? Is it reading a good book? Is it having quiet time with a coffee? Is it meditating? I, I don't know. Is it being outside with a horse? Whatever it may be. It needs to be for you. So this isn't something for someone else. Yes, we do get joy and pleasure from helping other people, but I am really talking to you as an individual. What do you need to do to top up your sparkle jar? Pop it in the comments. I'd be really interested to know, actually, what is it that you do to put a bit of joy in your heart? Because when we're dealing with an elderly cat, it's just like an elderly member of the family, in my opinion. It's hard. It's really hard at times. So have a think about what you need to do to stay sane. I would say, <laughs> have a nice break. <laughs> have a nice break. Go away for a few days. You know, I would, uh, since we've had Leo before COVID hit, around Pickle's date when she was put to sleep, I had a couple of days away by myself. I switch off all my phones, my technology. For those of you that have followed Naturally Cats for a while will know that, you know, I'm, I'm um, offline. And I read some books and I'm in a place by the sea and I meditate and it's just some quiet time. And I come back and I'm like recharged, ready to go. Yes, not possible at the moment, but have a think about what it is for you. OK, so that's everything. I'm, I'm, I'm running over. If anybody's had to go, I'm sorry. And uh, if you're still there, thank you very much. So just before I wrap up and come to the chat, 
as I mentioned, there are other webinars that we did that were free that are on the Naturally Cats YouTube channel. Um, so we've got anxiety, grief, self-selection and cat food. So I uh, would highly recommend you check them out. There are also a couple of paid for webinars that we did, which is cats and over grooming and cats and aggression. So again, you can buy them from the Naturally Cat shop, buy the products and then an email is sent to you with a link to download them. And this is ways that you can contact me or indeed the Naturally Cats community. So we've got the discussion group on Facebook, like I said, come and join us. We have a mixture of information, funny stuff, silly stuff and genuine like, you know, concerned questions. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and there's the website www.naturallycats.co.uk which as I said if you head to the shop tab there's the webinars you can buy the book you can get the herb gardens uh, and there's also the blogs that you can read as well. So 